Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Today I have a message for my sisters in Jesus Christ about how to study God's Word. How is it that we are not deceived? How can we know the truth? So I'd like to begin in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, and may the Lord bless the reading of his word. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What does it mean to rightly divide the word of truth? Well, it doesn't mean the practice of theology. Now, theology is an operation of witchcraft whereby religious authorities twist the Word of God and use various practices such as uh, examining the Greek and Hebrew in order to tell you that God's Word, the King James Version of the Holy Bible, if you speak English, doesn't mean what it says. So let me repeat this. Theology is an operation of witchcraft in which religious authorities tell you that the Word of God, as contained in the King James Version of the Holy Bible, doesn't mean what it says. And they present to you different translations, or they analyze words in order to say that things spoken very clearly in the Holy Bible are incorrect. So I want to, first of all, let's talk about theology for just a moment. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 13. And we, we will read what happens to people who do this. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, line up, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon, upon line. Here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. So what this is, is when people build up a doctrine by picking a passage of, of the Bible here and there, here a little, there a little, line upon line, in order to construct for the people a false doctrine. So we can see here that the prophet Isaiah clearly spoke against this practice. Now, when we're talking about changing God's word, which is actually quite, quite a stunning thing that anyone would presume to do it, let's go first to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 2. So Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 2. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you. Neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. So this is written in the Old Testament, and we can understand that God's word doesn't change, and that when God speaks something, he means it. So let's go all the way to the end of the scripture, in Revelation chapter 22, and we'll read, we will read in Revelation 22, 18 and 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things that are written in this book. So this is a very serious thing, that when people change the word of God in order to suit themselves, to create doctrines that make them comfortable, in their sin. And I have many videos on this topic, and I'm not going to review a lot of these 
false doctrines now, but I did want to call attention to the practice of theology as being something that God's people should renounce. Because to go to theologians, to read commentaries, to hear the intellectual discussions from religious authorities, from people who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, is a, an endeavor that will only lead you into deception. There is one source and one source only that Christians need to understand the truth, and that is to read the Holy Scripture, God's Word. So let's go now to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we'll read verses 15 through 17. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now that is very clearly stated that the word of God is brought to us by the inspiration of God. And just briefly, I'd like to make mention that the, the Roman whore, the whore of Babylon, has always made the word of God her primary enemy. Because if people have access to God's word, they will not believe the false doctrines of mis, mi, Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon is composed not only of the Roman Catholic Church, but the entire ecumenical movement. So the Protestant churches, the various pagan churches, all have been drawn in once again to the Catholic Church. And Catholic means all including. Basically, that's what the word Catholic means. It means it's a universal church that includes everyone. Jesus Christ said, though, that the way unto life was narrow and few would find it and that there would be many who would follow the broad path to destruction. And the religious people of these days who call, call themselves Christians are not Christians. They are pagans. They worship many gods. In, in the modern day churches, this is known as worshiping a trinity or a triune god, where the god that they worship is not one but three. And they say three and one, and that three means one, which is just confusion. And when you question that, they tell you, well, it's a mystery. You can't understand it. But the reason why you can't understand it is because it's nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. It's paganism trying to incorporate the one true God of Christianity into itself so that people will be deceived into worshiping the Antichrist. So in terms of there being one God, I want to quickly go to the book of John, chapter 20. And here we will read of the resurrected Jesus Christ speaking to Mary. So in John, chapter 20, and, pardon me, and verse 17, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and to your Father, and to my God, and your God. So Jesus Christ, the Son of God, never claimed to be God. He claimed to be the Son of God, which is a very different thing. Let's go now to John chapter 17, and we'll read verses 1 through 3. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. And as, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. 
and this is life eternal. Now, pay attention here. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So Jesus Christ, the Son of God, never claimed to be a deity. He claimed to be the Son of God, and that the one true God was his Father, the Holy Spirit, his Father, is the one true God who will never change. There is only ever going to be one God. And this God dwelled fully in his Son. And this one true God was made manifest in the flesh. So when we read in the Holy Scripture that Jesus Christ was manifest in the flesh, this means that God the Father the Holy Spirit, the creator of the universe, fully indwelled his son in the flesh of his son. There is only one God. And this is so very important because most people these days have been deceived on this account because of the practice of theology. Let's turn now to the book of Ephesians chapter 3 and we'll read verses 14 and 15. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So there is a family in heaven and earth, and we are all named by this name, Jesus Christ. And this family has a father, and the father of this family is also called Jesus Christ. There is one name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ inherited his name from his Father. When in Matthew 28, the risen Jesus Christ commanded his Gospels to go into all the world, preaching the Gospel and baptizing them in the name of of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. This name is the one name, Jesus Christ. So when people are baptized in the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, it's because they've been deceived by theologians into thinking that the titles are the same as the name, but they're not. If I were to write you a check and I were to sign it, earthen vessels, that check would be no good. I need to sign it with my name. And in order to become a Christian, one must take the name of Jesus Christ in baptism. Baptism has two parts, water and spirit. Jesus said, unless a man is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And this is another thing that the operation of the theology has deceived people about that they don't think that they need to be born of water and spirit. Both parts are necessary, water and spirit. And this baptism was what the apostles all preached. It began in Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39, and continued throughout the book of Acts. There was no other gospel preached. But these days, again, because of the operation of theology, we have a different gospel being preached, which is you don't have to be obedient to what the scripture says. You don't have to be baptized in Jesus' name. You don't have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And you don't have to be obedient to the commandments of Jesus Christ. All you have to do is say a sinner's prayer, invite Jesus into your heart, or accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and then you have a ticket into the kingdom. Now these doctrines are not found in the Holy Scripture, and it is not the way of salvation. And the reason why I'm emphasizing this is because many, many well-intentioned people who really want to serve Jesus Christ and really want to enter his kingdom have been misled about the way of salvation. And they believe in a false god, they do not know Jesus Christ. They have accepted a different gospel. And for that reason, they are not going to enter the kingdom of God. And this is a very serious thing. 
not saying this to offend anyone, rather to bring you into line with what the scripture says. Now, Jesus Christ said in John chapter 8, so in, in, in John chapter 8, and I wasn't planning on this particular scripture, but it's important. Um, and we'll read in verses 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him. So Jesus was speaking to the believers of his time. If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So in order to know the truth, we have to continue in God's word. We have to read it. We need to know what it says so that wolves in sheep's clothing won't deceive us into thinking that we've been saved from our sins when what we've done is believed a false gospel and then we are continuing in our sins. The, the Bible says that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says that those who continue in their sin will not inherit the kingdom of God. Only those who overcome will inherit the kingdom of God. And there is only one way to overcome sin, and that is to have your sins remitted in the waters of baptism. Receive the the power of the living God dwelling inside of you, the Holy Ghost, so that you are then able to overcome sin. And anyone who tells you otherwise is making a lie for you so that you will feel comfortable as you continue in your sins, walking along the broad path that leads to destruction. So when we read in the Bible that we should rightly divide the word of truth. One thing we know is that it does not mean theology, but there is something that we need to know. So let's go to Colossians chapter 2. And there are some things that it's important to know when reading the Bible so that one doesn't misinterpret so let's go to Colossians 2 and verse 14. And, well, let's start with verse 13. It says, And you, being dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. And of course, if you go back to verse 12, and let's just do that, that we know this is referring to being baptized. So buried with him in baptism, where also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him, who? Jesus Christ from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Now, there are many theologians who will say that this means that Christians don't need to keep the law, the law of God. But the ordinances here is not speaking of the law. Ordinances are something else. The, the ordinances that God gave to the Jewish people, which were a picture of what would happen later, such as the various sacrifices, such as the various feasts. These are the things that have been blotted out. But God's law has never changed. Let's go now to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. And let's read in God's word here what the Son of God had to say about the law. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not, I come, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. 
For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. So, of course, there are many theologians who want to say that, that the people of God no longer have to hold to the commandments of God, that women are free to, to uh, usurp the authority of their husbands, of men in the church, to speak in the church, to, to call themselves by fancy titles and, and exert authority over the people of God that it's okay for people to sell prophecies and profit off them, that, that it's okay with God if people do, do such a thing, that it's okay with God if people reinterpret the scripture in order to bring it in line with what's popular and fashionable. And what I would say to you is that we have examined from the Holy Scripture that both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, God is very clear that it is considered by him to a, to be a, a major transgression to alter God's word at all, to take away from it or to add to it. So when Jesus Christ claimed not to be God, but to be the Son of God, when the scripture says that in him dwelled all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, what that means is that Jesus Christ was manifest in the flesh. And these things are hidden from people who want to believe that it's okay to continue in their iniquity. They want the things of this world. They want money, position, power, and fame. And for that reason, they are unwilling to read the Word of God as it's written and obey it as it's written, and they are misleading many. The way not to be deceived isn't to, to believe what I've just told you, but to go over the passages in the Bible that I have just reviewed with you and get yourself, of course, a King James Version. Because theologians have presented to you many translations whereby the Word of God is confused. God's Word is holy and perfect. It is not missing anything. It doesn't need to be interpreted. It near, merely needs to be read and Obeyed. Let's go now to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we'll read here. We'll read here in verse 21. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. The way that we prove things is by reading God's Word. And when we don't understand something, what we do is we get on our knees, knees and we ask Jesus Christ to reveal it to us. And he will. When Jesus said in John 8 that, that if we continue in his word, then we will know the truth. Then we are his disciples. That's what it means. That's what it means. That to know the truth of God isn't to go around to various experts and people who have college degrees, the renowned men of this world, to get them to tell us what the Word of God says when we have it available to us. What I would venture to say is that the Word of God is something that, that may not always be available to us, and time should not be wasted running around on the Internet and going to various uh, commentaries and analysis of religious men because time is running out, and if you're not familiar with God's Word, it's very likely that you have been and will continue to be deceived. So my prayer is that many people will repent of having been um, captivated by the ease of theology. Theology is very easy. We can, if we want to follow theology, we don't have to study for ourselves. Rather, we can go sit in a church house and have some religious authority tell us that, that the Word of God says that we're okay with God, that God loves us, He knows our heart, He wants all of us to get into the kingdom, and, and He knows that we're sinners, and, and He understands, and, and all that other nonsense, that foolish nonsense that will cause many people 
to end up in the lake of fire. That's the easy way. That's the broad way that leads to destruction. It's very easy to feel self-righteous about attending such gatherings and thinking that we heard from an expert, therefore we are saved. But when you stand before the Son of God and he's judging you, he's going to say, why did you not obey my word? And if you say, well, my uh, pastor told me that I didn't have to, that, that you love me anyway, Jesus going, is going to say to you, depart from me. I never knew you, ye who work iniquity. That's what's going to happen. And the thing is, is that it might feel uh, very comfortable right now and very easy right now to follow theologians, but your eternal life is at stake. So I urge you to get a King James Version of the Holy Bible and to read it and to look up the scriptures that I presented to you in this video. They will be in the description box below. You can email me if you have further questions, or you can go to the website of the man of God that is listed directly underneath this video if you want sound teachings from a man of God from the Holy Scripture. Time is short. There will come a time very soon where religious people who are full of themselves and full of iniquity, that, that time will run out on them. And when Jesus Christ returns, he will be ashamed of them because they were ashamed of his word, that they didn't want to obey his word. They wanted to rewrite his word. So um, feel free to comment in the comment section below, but the comment section is not for religious striving and debate. If you don't love the word of God, you're free to start your own YouTube channel, but the comment section is for sincere questions and sincere comments and not for religious striving and debate for the end is near and this is a christian channel and it's my prayer that many might repent of the ease of theology and come to jesus christ by his word